the first question is, some say that Jesus didn't accomplish salvation on the cross, but that he only accomplished forgiveness of sins and that we have to save ourselves by faith. Wouldn't this mean that their faith is in their own faith to save them instead of in Jesus? Okay, Renee, did you get that? Heaven to Renee. Okay, I'm trying to figure out the wording here. Wouldn't this mean that their faith is in their own faith to save? Okay. Some say Jesus didn't accomplish salvation on the cross, but that he only accomplished forgiveness of sins. We have to say, okay, save ourselves by faith. All right. First of all, you know, this is the one thing I hate. You just say a prayer and be saved. We don't put faith in a prayer. We don't put faith in our faith. We put faith in the work that Christ did. And what was the work? He came here, left heaven, lived as a man, a sinless, perfect life, fulfilling God's law. Then he took on himself the sins of the world who knew no sin, died for those sins, was buried, and three days later rose again, proving his blood was accepted as a propitiation or full and final appeasement for our sins. What's left to do? If if I have a debt that will continue to be incurred until I die, because in the old covenant, they would have to kill an animal year by year continually offering those same sacrifices. But Hebrews tells us this man offered one sacrifice for sins forever. And then he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. He had purged our sins by himself. One sacrifice for sins forever. And that we're perfected forever. So if I have a sin debt and his blood is how that debt was paid because the wages of sin was death. And he paid that debt of death for me. I have no debt left. See, the problem is people still think that you get to heaven by being good. And you don't. You either have God's righteousness because you trusted in Christ and his blood makes you worthy. Or you have your own. I don't care how good you live. It talks about those that were not yet born having done neither good nor evil. They're still lost. All right, still lost. Haven't even done anything yet. They need the blood too. Because it's it's not a matter of your action. It's a condition we all have. We were born in this iniquity. And in order to be restored to God, that had to be paid for. We had to be born Again, reborn into God's spiritual family. So we needed a spiritual birth. So Jesus accomplished all of that by his death, burial, and resurrection. That is the good news of the gospel. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, having reconciled us to him. So if somebody says that, they are just ignorant of what Jesus actually accomplished with his life, death, burial, and resurrection. I include life there because he could fulfill the law in his life. And then we live by his life. So uh, it really is just a wordplay. Um, forgiveness of sins is salvation. Because if your sins are paid for, there's nothing holding you, hold against you for you to be in God's presence. So salvation, forgiveness of sins is the same. That's why it says the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. So um, the, the problem is people want, this self-righteousness wants a hole to hide in. And uh, so if they can't boast in their works, they now want to boast in their faith. My faith is so strong. I'm saved by my faith. 
we all have faith. Every person is given a measure of faith. And we can choose where to place that faith. That's the difference. Some place their faith in the theory of evolution and the atheistic worldview. Some place their faith in false religions. We place our faith on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the security of our eternal life. So what we place our faith in, the object of our faith is what's important. Because here it says, some say Jesus didn't accomplish salvation. What did he accomplish then? Most would say uh, nothing. Because they really think Jesus is some supplement to their righteousness. They're getting there because they don't sin. That That's a joke, but there's people that really believe they don't sin. And so they think it's Jesus plus them not sinning that's getting them to heaven. Um, and which means they're lost. Sorry, they are. Uh, and then it says that he only accomplished forgiveness of sin. Exactly. Our sins are forgiven because he shed his blood. That's not only, that's everything, of course. Uh, and that we have to save ourselves by faith. Again, everybody has faith. We don't save ourselves by faith. It's where you put the faith that saves you. It's the object of faith that saves you, not your faith. It's the object of faith that's saving you. Um, and it says, wouldn't it mean that their faith is in their own faith to save them instead of in Jesus? Very possibly, yeah. We don't have faith in our faith. And you can tell when you have faith in your faith. Let me tell you how you, you know that. Because you start getting scared. Do I believe enough? Faith in your faith. Jesus said faith of a mustard seed. It doesn't matter how great your faith is. It's the object on which you place that faith, where that faith rests. So if you if you start being introspective, am, do I believe enough? Am I believing right? Am I that that's faith in your faith? But when you say whatever faith I have, it's going on him. It's the object on which your faith rests that makes all the difference. All right. Well done, sister. Uh, all right, Brother Ben, what would you like to add to that? I wouldn't really add anything to it. I would just take a different angle. I like the, I like the angle she took. Uh, I, I, I just take a different angle is all. Um, I think, again, this question is to think that your faith somehow, your faith is what keeps you saved, that it, it's a failure to understand uh, the perfect justice and perfect righteousness of God. You, you have to, it's not your faith that saves you. It, it's what you're like, like Renee said, it's the object uh, A faith, your faith, the, 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 the strongest faith in an unworthy object can't save anything, but uh, the weakest faith in a worthy object can save anybody. And that's exactly what Renee was saying. And what we, it's the ob object. What we believe is, is Christ, his person and his work, the son of God, who, who died for all our sins. So if he died for all our sins, the moment we believe that, it, it's just like in the Old Testament when they would enter a covenant. You know, they, they went through a ritual. They would uh, slaughter animals and, and sprinkle blood and all that stuff. Well, this is the same thing with, with, with grace as a covenant as well. It's a promise. It's God's promise to you. But unlike uh, the Old Testament covenant where it was a two-way agreement where, uh, you know, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, or, or you know, if you do this, you'll be blessed, or if you don't do this, um, you'll be cursed. Um, this is a promise to God. It's it's a, it's a it's a promise of blessing, and we simply enter that covenant through faith, and we we enter it by believing by what Christ did for us. So how 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 could it be that if if we believe that Christ died for all our sins, the moment we believe that Christ died for all our sins, and there's no more no nothing more that could condemn us before God. Again, sin is what condemns us, and to, and so if we believe that the sin was taken care of, how is our how is our faith, uh, how is our ongoing faith factor into that? Because all our sins, even if we were fa fa uh, failed to continue to believe, well, that's obviously a sin. Uh, in fact, there's a Bible verse that says there's a verse that says uh, anything that's not done in faith is sin. So if we if we fail to continue to believe, 
uh, well, again, that, that is paid for too. And so it's, it's very important to get, I think, to be exact about this. And the other thing too, I think, is a lot of times this is confused. Well, okay, so let me, let me so like I said, uh, it's a failure to understand God's perfect justice and perfect righteousness. That's what the Bible's about. It's about God being perfectly just, perfectly righteous. He's not lenient on sin. He doesn't give clemency towards sin. That's why he says not one jot or tittle will uh, by all by any means um uh you know be taken away from the law until the heaven and earth are pa pass away because that's when the new generations occurs and that's when everything's created all all things are made new again and there will be no more sin there'll be no more unrighteousness and there's so so there's no 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 more need for a law you only put again you only put someone who's not righteous under a law because you don't trust them um and so Again, also too that the law identifies sin. That's why uh, you know you see all, see all these terms in the Bible like fornicator, adulterer. That's those you know whenever you hear those terms, it's a law language because law identifies sin. It, it identifies the offense where there's no offense, where there's no law, there's no offense, and that's what Christ did exactly. He took away the law for us. He took away what that which was contrary to us, and stood against us, and he nailed it to the cross. So that we're no under under no law whatsoever. So, um, I, I think again, I think it's important to understand that people are eternally condemned because their sin is still on their account because they did not accept Christ as their sin bearing substitute. Now, I think a lot of confusion comes, and I, I think there's even disagreement on among the panelists here. But this is my view: is that uh, you know some people would distinguish. I, to me, it's kind of splitting hairs, and I think it often leads to confusion. Um, they, they would split hairs, I think, where they'd say, okay, well, no, people don't go to hell for their sins. They go to hell because their works weren't good enough. Well, again, I don't see any place in the Bible where sin and works are decoupled. Those are, they're inextricably linked. That's why it says things like workers of iniquity. And just working in general is the antithesis of resting. So we rest in Christ through faith. Working is, it, it, you're doing work, you're not resting. So, uh, again, I, I don't see any distinction between works and sin in the Bible. They're they're inextricably linked when you're when you're under the law. Uh now again when you're when you're under grace, then then your works actually count for something because they they can be uh wrought through the spirit. Whereas before it, without uh, which if you're not a believer you don't have the spirit and you can't uh, none of your all your works are wrought through the flesh. Since the flesh they're defiled. And in fact that's why we enter uh God's covenant of grace through faith because our faith in a righteous object is the only thing that's not defiled about us. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're, we are defiled. The a Bible talks about all throughout the Old Testament that, you know, all the altars couldn't be cut, you know, made, it had to be made without hands or, or they couldn't be defiled with uh, people's the hands of, of men's, men's, anything men touches is defiled. And so uh, the, the Old Testament makes that very clear. Also too, is another, I, I think another, area where people split hairs and i think uh is that they say oh well god re reconciled the whole world to them but they don't have eternal life again i think that's another misunderstanding too because um i think that's another uh verse that so i think actually that's you can prove i can pretty much prove that out because uh in second corinthians 5 in second corinthians chapter 5 18 verses 21 it says now all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So people read that verse and says, see, God reconciled the entire world to himself, and so that's why he, no one is going to be, goes to hell for their sins, because they're all imputed to Christ. I, I agree with that. But the problem is, it's all about location, location, location. He imputed all sin to Christ, but you have to be in Christ for it to become part of your identity. Otherwise, you're still an Adam, and sin is still on your account. And that's why the Bible, that's, if people went to hell, uh, if they didn't go to hell for their sins, then I, I think that calls God unjust because they went to hell, they went to hell for no, no cause. They're, God's justice demands that they, the offense uh, is, God can't uh, impute sin on someone, uh, if if there's no sin associated with them, and so again, there the Bible talks about you know in the Old Testament 
You know, I'm sorry, in Revelation it says all liars and even cowards, all cowards and liars and adulterers and, and liars, they have a part in their lake of fire because that's because they're still, uh, they're still, they're still, they're still, sin is still on them. It's, it's part, they're still associated with it. And so, uh, and again, when I read Second Corinthians, where I said, where it said, God not imputing the trespasses, trespasses to them, but has committed to us the world of reconciliation. And he says that it, in that God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself. Well, again, people would say, oh, see, everyone's reconciled to him. Well, only in the sense that, uh, I think that's basically saying, okay, when when it's all said and done, when those of us who have endured to, to, and to made it into the new creation, those are the people who have, God will, we could be safely said, God reconciled the world to himself. But, the people who have not believed, they in that sense, those people were, were never reconciled to God, to God, because I think it, again, even that this verse proves it. Proves it because the next verse says, "Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God." So he said, he just said previously that the whole world would reconcile to him, but now he's saying, "Be reconciled to God," and that's what we do as ambassadors: tell people to be reconciled to God. So it, it, it's a uh, I think a lot of confusion comes about, and a lot of hairs are split between, okay, well, we have to believe that, uh, you know, you're not saved unless uh, you believe that you you were forgiven, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago, as opposed to when you actually believed. And again, I think it's just splitting hairs, and I think all that hair splitting comes from, uh, by decoupling works and sin, and then also by this verse in Corinthians that talks about reconciliation. So... Uh, to me, again, it, it's it, it, it's again you enter the covenant. You just like in the Old Testament, uh, you know when you when they when they enter the covenant at Sinai, it was a one time deal. They entered it; it was a one time act. They didn't keep on entering that covenant. It was they entered it, and, and all their offspring entered it by by their forebears. And just like uh, uh, when Adam sinned, we were considered in his loins, so to speak. And so we were all Adam said was imputed to us, and that's why, that's why Christ's righteousness can, can be imputed to us as well, because his works are put to our account, just like Adam's sin was put to our account. Yes, we're sinners by practice and by nature, but we're also under sin as a like a, a, a divine decree, as Romans says, that we're all under sin because we're born in Adam. That's why we'd be born again in Christ, and so. Faith is a one-time deal. It's 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 an, salvation is event. It's it's a birth. It's it. That's why the Bible is clear about looking looking uh, at Christ at one time. Uh, you know, just like uh, the Israelites in the wilderness when they're bitten by serpents, uh, serpents they looked at the at, at the cross. It was a one-time deal. They didn't have to keep on looking at the cross to be to, to so they for the poison. Uh, they weren't poisoned or they wouldn't die from the poison. No, they only had to look once and they were instantly cured. Um, Christ like it to eating and drinking his body or, or drinking water. It's, it's a one-time deal. And so our faith doesn't keep, uh, keep us saved. It's only way, it's way we enter into that one way door of eternity. Uh, once you enter that door, there's no exiting out of it. Um, and you know, even the ark, God shut the door on the ark. He, he couldn't get out if he wanted to. Um, so I could go on and on, but I, I, I think again, yeah, I think, and also too, there's a verse in Jude, I think it is, that says we are kept by the power of God, uh, preserved in Christ. And the, if you look at the Greek there, it, it's clear that God does the guard, God guards us in Christ, and, and we entered it through faith. We don't preserve ourselves in Christ through our faith. We just that's just the way we enter 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 into it. So it's a one time deal. It's an event, and. Uh, we don't keep ourselves by our faith. Okay. The, the, the question is, um, some say that Jesus didn't accomplish salvation on the cross, but that he only gave, accomplished forgiveness of sins. Uh, and that we have to save ourselves by faith. Well, um, uh, what, what's wrong with us having to save ourselves with faith? There, there's a, a thing in Calvinism called monergism. Monergism is that uh, uh, you can't even choose to believe. God has to make you believe. 
And that way, you did nothing. God did it all, even gave you the faith. They want they want it to be 100% God uh, and uh, because they think, say that the only way God gets all the glory is if he did it all. If we did anything, even believed on our own, that we have the right to some kind of credit or glory. Um, and then there's synergism, which is the, uh, the belief that um, uh, there's a, a YouTube channel called Grace Faith 08. Grace Faith 08. Uh, I heard the pastor on a sermon once to explain that the reason their church is named Grace Faith 08, they started in 08, but Grace Faith. Why? Why Grace Faith? Because grace is God's part. Faith is our part. There is a responsibility of both. God is responsible for being gracious and giving us, solving the problem for us. So he became a man. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He offers the gift of eternal life simply through your, our faith. But we do have a part in it. We, we have to believe and we have to have faith. So uh, there is a, a responsibility from God and from man. Uh, but uh, what about the people who are boasting in their faith? Uh, well, I posted Romans 3, 27, 28. It says, where is boasting then? I like Paul also said in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, uh, that uh, there is no boasting. So uh, it's, it's important to Paul and, and to get across to us that we have no right to boast. Well, should we be Calvinists? And because now we, we can boast that we didn't even have faith. God imposed the faith on us. God gets all the glory. No, it says boasting is excluded in Romans 3.27. By, by what? Law? Uh, of works? Nay. So not by the law of works, but by the law of faith. So we can actually boast that, yes, our faith in Jesus is what gives us salvation. And it's not that we're boasting in our faith. We're boasting in the fact that I have faith that Jesus did it all. Uh, the, he, the scriptures say that even if we have no faith, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So um, even if our faith fails, uh, once we believe we're born again, it cannot be reversed or undone. Uh, uh, so uh, we now it's not up to us to keep our faith perfect or grow our faith so it's the greatest faith no and then people are comparing their faith and that's the problem we had with some people working with us in the past is that they were basically challenging everybody else quality of their faith and boasting in the quality of their own faith so we don't want to fall into that uh, the fact is we have faith that Jesus accomplished it. We, our faith is in the person of Jesus. We, we understand and believe who he is. He's God who became a man so he could die for our sins. Uh, we, ha we have faith uh, in what he accomplished. It, when he died on the cross, it's, he says it's finished. So he accomplished everything that's necessary. Nothing else needs to be done except our responsibility is faith. And uh, once we have faith, then it's irrevocable by God or by us. So uh, a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, but let's not get into uh, uh, questioning the quality of everybody's faith. Uh, everybody's faith will uh, be stronger and weaker at different points in our lives. And so uh, the, the question is, wouldn't this mean that their faith is in their own faith? No, my, my faith is in the faithfulness of Christ. That's what my faith is in. I'm fa I, I believe that Christ is faithful. He will keep his promise. 